Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 4-5 from the Forrester textbook. Today we are talking about parametric functions. Now if you remember we mentioned these and I said I wasn't going to explain what they were back in uh, chapter 1. But now we are up to chapter 4. So now you are responsible to figure these out at least in a basic kind of sense. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to pull apart in your mind what has been fused together, namely x and y. So what I'm talking about is here, look at this graph and see as you trace your finger along, go start at the left edge and work your way right, and what happens if you can pull apart x and y in your mind? Think about what happens to the x value as you move right it just goes linearly. There's nothing magical that happens to the x value. It's just going 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's just steadily going without any magic happening to it. It's only the y values that are doing the sine thing, going from 0 to 1, then 0 to negative 1, like that. So if we think about this in terms of Pulling them apart, we'll start to see, oh, these things that we thought were pretty complicated, maybe only one part of it is complicated. Try a whole circle then. Now here we've got something that's not a function. We just ripped apart a function. Let's try ripping apart a relation. Let's try seeing what we can find here. What's happening to our x values? Let's start at the 3 o'clock position and go counterclockwise. Well, our x's are starting at 1, going down to 0, going down to negative 1, going up to 0. Trace your finger around and you'll see it's the x values that are doing the cos thing and the y values that are doing the sine thing, just like we said when we first introduced circular trig functions a while back. This is, this is how we can rip them apart and have each of them be a function of something else despite the fact that the circle is not a function, it fails the vertical line test. Here is one just for fun. Now try to separate out in your mind what's happening to x and what's happening to y as you trace along the spiral. What's happening to our x values? Well you can see they x values start off at zero, they go to a little bit more, and then they go to a more or less, and then even higher, and lower, and even higher, and even lower, and on and on. And so if we stretched out just an understanding of what's happening to x, it would be this ever increasing huge sine wave. And if we stretched out what's happening to y, it would be the same thing that it goes a little up, and then a little more down, and then even more up, and then way more down, and on and on and on for forever. Lastly, this one is just some eye candy. Try to stretch around and follow one of the spiral arms out there on the outside. Go ahead, put your finger on the screen, dirty up your iPad. It's okay, take a second, trace it out. What? It's not even a spiral. So trippy, optical illusion. Fooled you. We are talking today about parametric equations. What we just did there was the sort of tangible physical way of doing this, of ripping apart x and y and experiencing them separately over time, typically, is the way that we pick another variable to define these things by something else. So, do you remember Pythagoras? We have a nice little cute song that we did from Frozen. I've got a video for it. I'll link to it somewhere. This is a super important set of theorems. In fact, really it's only the first two, but you need those first two Pythagorean trig identities, which is why this is in this chapter. We're gonna need some help to be able to deal with trig. Which one of these was the most basic? First line of the song, sine squared plus co squared equals one. So that, that is something that is very, very fundamental to the unit circle, that your x and your y make a right triangle, a reference triangle with a hypotenuse of one. So let's switch to our calculator now and you're gonna press the mode button and then in mode, you'll see that most everything we've done up till now 
apart from this same exercise in chapter one, has been in the function mode, the funk. And now we're going to switch to par, to parametric. And if we do that, and then we press the Y equals button, we get a very different set of uh, view here. We get X and Y pulled apart, and then, freakiest of freakies, the X button, which has always had more than X written on it, is now actually going to produce T's when we try to type with that button. So, enter into X1, 5 cos T, put into Y1, 7 sine T, and then press window and make sure that your T goes from 0 to 2 pi with maybe a T step of like 0.1 or something. What shape do you get? Well, it's an oval. The shape that we would typically call in math an ellipse, but you can call it an oval if you want for a few more sections, but it's not exactly a circle, but pretty close, a squished circle. Why? Why does that happen? Why, if we have that x is equal to 5 cos t and y is equal to 7 sine t, how can we think about this equation? Where did this come from? Why is there this pattern that these things are interlinked somehow? Well, as long as we've got this t, it's going to be pretty hard for us to, to understand what's happening here. So let's try to remember, I just said we need to know that sine squared, and I'll go ahead and use the variable t, sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. And now we need to try to get those same kinds of functions alone up here. So we can turn this one into x over 5 equals cos t, and we can turn this one into y over 7 equals sine t. And now what do we need? We don't just need plain cos and plain sine, we need them squared. So if we square both sides of our equations, then now we've got, oh, what is cos t equal to? Cos t, cos squared t is equal to x squared over 5 squared, and sine squared t is equal to y squared over 7 squared, and if we add those two pieces up, we get 1. So this is the equation for an ellipse. This is the equation of a squished circle about the origin with an x radius of 5 and a y radius of seven. So we can move these left and right with our traditional sort of H and K, and that will get us an oval that will have a center at H and K, and then we're gonna end up going A to the left and to the right in the X direction, and B up and down in the Y direction, and then we will make our funky football there, okay? So these two radii are the distance from the center to the edge in the x direction or the distance from the center to the edge in the y direction. We will use these to have a little art class. We're gonna practice drawing parametric functions, at least just for ovals, for ellipses, here in this part of the chapter. So if you look in the book here, here's uh, figure 45D, you can see how they've drawn this shape out of a number of different ovals. So we're gonna need to practice doing that and we can draw some of them dotted, some of them solid, but we also need a couple of straight lines. So let's uh, practice that, get out your calculator, and if you press second program, there is a option there to draw, and one of the things that we need to draw is a line, and with the line function here on the calculator, you specify the starting x comma y comma the finishing x comma y, and it will draw straight lines for you. So with this, we can turn our calculator into kind of a very, very straight-laced drawing program. And I would like for you to take, to get this figure here, figure 4, 5D, into your calculator. So you can see how we need to draw one 
uh, ellipse with a center at 11.5 and an x radius of a little more than 1 and a y radius of 4. And that one is solid. Just draw that all the way around. And then we need to draw another ellipse with the same x radius and the same y radius, but it needs to have a center at 2.5. So we'll do that one, but we'll only go from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 in the solid. And then we'll go back and we'll do negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 with the dotted. And now we've got our two ovals. And then we go back and we draw a line from 2 comma 9 over to 11 comma 9. And then we draw another line from 2 comma 1 to 11 comma 1. And this is what you need to save this. Don't mess around with other stuff in your calculator. Save this for last. This is what you need to bring and show me. Not a piece of paper, but this pretty picture in your calculator is what's going to be required for you to show me that you did watch this video. So this entire process is something that we will be doing more of in class and if you have any questions there are some other videos around YouTube which I'm sure it will recommend for you of parametric equations if you're curious and want to understand this more but for now all we're doing with it is drawing ovals and maybe adding some lines so that we can get a beginning of understanding how sine and cosine put in for x and y can make ellipses. See you in class.